Hi there. In this short video, I want to try and evaluate some of the policies that might be used to improve living standards in the UK. Now, many of these policies could also apply to other countries, but uh, we're going to focus on the United Kingdom in this particular session. Living standards in the UK in recent times have been fairly flat. Here are two measures of the basic measure of standard of living, real GDP per capita and real household disposable income. And there's an index of both, and you can see that the recession had quite a significant downward effect on GDP per capita. Indeed, by the first quarter of 2015 here, the level of per capita GDP uh, was actually lower than at the start of the recession. So it's taken a long time for per capita incomes to recover. And likewise, real household disposable income has also been fairly flat. Indeed, it was only two, just less than 2% higher in 2015 than it was in 2008. So we've had a period of fairly flat or falling living standards on average for people in the UK. Well, one of the ways to avoid a decline in living standards is to avoid a recession. It's a pretty obvious point, but economies that go into a downspin, a severe economic recession, will necessarily see a fall in per capita incomes. Uh, the Greeks understand that perfectly well, so do, do many other European countries. Um, they've almost lost a generation's worth of living standard improvements. So my first point will be have macro policies in place which help to absorb economic shocks, which keep the economy growing at a level which is just above, hopefully, the rate of growth of population to drive per capita incomes higher, not lower. The other point I want to emphasise before I go through my six policies is that productivity really does matter. If you're revising demand and supply side policies, productivity becomes critical to any long term discussion. This chart shows constant price and there was real GDP per hour worked from 2005 onwards. Now, the base for the index is 2007. You can see that because every value is 100. Follow the orange line, the yellowy orange line. That is real GDP per hour worked in the UK. And you can see that in 2014, compared to 2007, it was 0.3% higher over a uh, seven-year period. There's been virtually no increase at all in real per capita income per hour worked in the UK. However, in other countries, of course, America, if we follow the dark line up here, America is up to 107.5. So in relative terms, other countries have been gaining ground. Italy has been lagging the UK. But every other G7 country has done better. So our relative productivity performance has been poor, and that is a key factor holding back living standards. I want to just talk you through what I think are six key strategies to improve living standards. And my argument is that living standards go up or they improve when an economy can sustain an increase in real per capita incomes and when the benefits of that growth are widely spread. In other words, inclusive growth of economic welfare. So here are my six policies. First, I think it's incredibly important to improve across the base of the economy, the human capital. What do we mean by that? The skills, the experiences, the aptitudes, the flexibilities, um, the attitudes of the workforce, the quality of the labor force is hugely important. So equipping a modern workforce with the skills of a fast-changing labour market are really, really important. From better language teaching to improved outcomes in science, technology, engineering, maths, basic English, uh, getting more students to do computer science, to code, for example, improve human capital. Secondly, you need the right incentives to create more, to get more people back into work. So incentives to uh, for people to find work, to be able to search for work, incentives for people to, come up, people to come off welfare. Linked with that, I think it's important to pay people properly. I think living standards are enhanced by having a living wage, not necessarily the national living wage introduced by Osborne. I think something probably higher. Many businesses understand, particularly larger businesses, that paying a living wage actually in the long run enhances their productivity. They have to train their workers better. They try and get better value added per worker employed. Yes, there are some short-term costs, but I think a living wage is important in lifting the income from and the incentive to, to train workers and get them employed. 
living standards is not just about GDP per capita. Living standards is also about people having access to high quality, affordable public services. So I think it's particularly important for the government to, to maintain levels of government spending in education, in healthcare, in transport, in the public goods and the merit goods that, that a modern society needs. The housing market will be critical to improving living standards in the UK. Many, many ways the housing market holds this country back. We, we have a lack of a chronic shortage of proper housing. We have a, an ageing housing stock. Uh, for many young people, housing to buy and to rent is now a significant financial cost. It's almost unaffordable for millions of young people. So I think proper supply side reforms in the housing market to improve the quality and stock of our of our housing sector to make housing more affordable is critical. And we also need successful businesses because uh, GDP per capita is the, the value of national output of goods and services. If we have successful, profitable businesses uh, that are innovative and which uh, pay their taxes and which ultimately pay their workers better, then that can generate higher levels of wealth. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having a successful, a thriving, innovative uh, private sector with lots of business startups and things and, and exporting potential businesses as well. So my argument is that living standards fundamentally determined is determined by lifting the stock of human capital, by making work pay, by paying people properly to enhance their efficiency, by having a strong public sector, uh, a flexible and affordable housing market and a dynamic private sector encouraged to innovate through competition. To my mind, it's this combination of policies which will lift living standards in the long term. But fundamentally, it's also about distribution. It's about uh, the benefits of growth being fairly widely spread. This data shows uh, various four measures of inequality in the UK. And uh, it's, um, this is uh, disposable income in the UK. And actually, in recent times, the, both the Gini coefficient um, and the the ratio of the income of the 80th percentile to the 20th percentile and the, the ratio of, of the 90th to the 10th and the Palmer ratio. We've covered all these measures of income inequality in another topic videos. There has been a modest fall in the index of inequality in the UK just in recent years. Much of this, the big rise in inequality happened in the late 1970s and into the 1980s. So if we can lift per capita incomes and if we can moderate the scale and depth and persistence of relative poverty, I think we're going a long way to raising living standards for the mass of people. Those were my own personal perspectives on some demand and supply side policies to improve living standards in the UK.